Welcome back, everybody! After an extended tea break, we arrive after the cucumber sandwiches have all been eaten and the oranges have been consumed to come back for our last game of the night. Do you enjoy the cricket references? Yep. I'm sitting here giggling to myself. It's nice. Nobody else understands them, but at we, least we I almost do. called off the game due to low light. The pitch was starting to break up a little bit, so we had a bit of a turn, and they all decided to come back out again. Okay. Let's get into the game. Yeah. Because <laughs> I was also running out of out of cricket quotes. You could have gone to, you know, the rain and having to pull the sheets over. No, that's why I said low light. Yeah. Didn't want to do too many weather effects. I know. I know. Rest in peace, Richie Benno. Commentator? Ten seconds yeah. remaining. One of the most famous ones from down in Australia. <laughs> See, I know one, of one cricket. Of, one of my, um, Five seconds one of my idols also as a kid. Oh. As far as commentators go. It was him and Ray Warren. Reserve two time. Two of the greatest commentators that Australia ever produced. <laughs> Brilliant times. Um, Dire team bang. Let's look at the game. What's up? What's up? What for grabs? What's at stake here? There's a lot, Durka. There's a spot in Texas. And everyone wants to go to Texas because everything's bigger in Texas. <laughs> everything's Radiant amazing in Texas. Uh, yeah, it's for X Games. It's for the for the huge land finals for the Join Out MLG Pro League. So we'll be uh, we'll be picking up with the whole MLG studio, taking it into X Games. There's uh, even a map. You walk in through the main gate and uh, turn left, and you'll be right there at the MLG booth. If you turn a little bit further to the right, you'll see the BMX pad. And then if you go a little bit further down the road, you'll see the monster truck rally that'll be Ooh. going on there. Seconds and a couple remaining. of other awesome machines being tossed around the place. And, Five uh, seconds yeah, remaining. It's, it's going to be a, an, a very big shindig. Vehicular action. Reserve then Dota time. 2 next door. All oh, the no you're going to have all the noises and stuff. We also, yeah, you'll have you'll have the atmosphere Dying. of that. Oh, yeah. Um, but we're also in a massive sound shell. So we'll actually, uh, like MLG is doing two games at the same time. So we'll yes, have go. Uh, no uh, Call of Duty. Sorry, of, of course. Co Call, Call of Duty because yeah. because they they do a lot of Call of Duty stuff for the console crowd, um, and we'll also have Dota next to it. So it's gonna be it's gonna be an awesome event, absolutely awesome event. If you haven't got your tickets yet, if you are over in America and you're listening to this right now, go and make sure you book your tickets. They're very easy to find. Uh, if you ever looking for any information on how to get remaining. these tickets, I know the MLG Twitter kind of puts out a tweet every two days um, with links to remaining. all the information you want. So just look up MLG. Uh, on Twitter. I Invoker. retweeted as well at Toby One Dota. That'll give you all the information you want. Dire and go get your tickets. And of course, shout out to everyone who's buying the wonderful chests. PPD was spawning the treant, uh, the treant armor during his game during the summit. And the Witch Doctor set. And the Witch oh, yeah, from, yeah. from the bundle. Yeah, that's true. He had both of them. So a very, a very pimped out captain of EG. EG will be attending. Uh, they are the directly invited team. So yeah, there's awesome teams which we'll be attending. We'll have great Dota, great times all weekend long. Uh, but let's focus on our game because we're looking to find Dragon the last Knight. position from the European qualifier. We already had um, Radiant Team Ban, uh, Virtus Pro as well as the Alliance yep. qualifying. So we're looking for the last team to represent Europe. So far, Vega had a fantastic start to the night. I still think they're coming into this game as as a favorite up against London Conspiracy. I, I might it might be in a little remaining. bit of trouble for saying that, primarily because London Conspiracy have been giving half decent results Five of late. Seconds and they also qualify for the Star Little Land final. But after the first game from Vega, Reserve time. I think they're gonna have some good confidence and momentum rolling into this game. <laughs> yeah, it's it's always hard to say with London Conspiracy. They're on a seven series Radiant win streak team right team now. They haven't bang. dropped any series in the past like week or so. So what, what teams were they playing though in uh, the seven series? Decent streak? teams like four ESC, they beat MIP last night. You know, okay. we're not talking but they did, you know, beat Goomba and a couple of other sort of tier three ish teams, but they've been, you know, solidly performing. That's mm -hmm. that, that's the exact thing Ten exact seconds, thing that Cap said to me last night when I said they're on a six series winning streak last night <laughs> before like, they went up. Like, like, who like, did they play uh, against? Yeah. But no, it's yeah. no decent decent teams. Like tier two, you know, but when, uh, to be honest, like I, when I saw the results, time. and I was like, "Oh wait, hang on, NIP LLC, that's not meant to happen. That was meant to be a one-sided game." And I had to look back over it and be like, "Yeah, okay, NIP lost." Like I know L NIP's been falling off the bandwagon a little bit of late, but I didn't think it was it was that bad. They had the third game in their grasp, and it just sort of fell away. Like they literally started off with a six-zero Lena. Uh, ten minutes in, but it, it didn't work out. But Vega banning out the Broodmother against LC, no oh. big surprises there. Regardless of changing out, relax for Dying Skylark. They still have bad. a very strong Broodmother player, and it's always a hero. You know that that can annoy you, and then you add in the fact you've got a Chen, so your lanes are automatically going to be that little bit weaker. 
Yeah. Oh, I actually love the way London Conspiracy started. They're banning Phase 2. Take out the Undying, take out the Wisp. You take out the heroes which Ten Vega could easily remaining. manipulate. So the Undying opens up for so many different lanes which Five are just so strong for remaining. Vega. And the Wisp, we already saw Wisp combo. You mentioned it during the last game. It's kind of like the bread and butter Reserve of Vega. Uh, and it's a Wisp. So you want to be removing that one. The Beastmaster as well as the as well as the Queen of Pain is just making sure that Vega have more lane security. And I really feel that's that's what the last series came down to. Um, where Vega was just able to have so much more lane supremacy of everything else. And their timings were always a little bit earlier as well. The first pick Invoker though is a little unusual. This is usually something they keep for the second phase where they have this... Like, I struggle to call it a pocket strat or a cheese strat because they do bring it out so often. It's not something that's, you know, once in a blue moon. They do love running it. It's SD Kunker Shadow Demon, where they just go for pick-off after pick-off and start building up momentum like that. Mm -hmm. But with, this, with the first pick Invoker, it makes me wonder if they're thinking about switching things up. Have a safe lane Invoker, have something, you know, different towards the mid lane, a more of a playmaking hero. Because Earthshaker, you know, he can save Invoker and keep him going mid lane, but against Dyer a Dragon Knight, I'm not sure what they'll be planning to do there. Yeah, I, I don't know either, because it's, it's a weird kind of thing. Like, the most Invokers I've been seeing of late have been in combination with Dro Ranger. So you can run this Quas Wex build and you've still got a huge amount of damage on the Invoker, so your lane presence is there and your team fight control really kicks in early. Uh, so my, my next thought was Radiant then, okay, maybe it'll be pick. a draw on Visage. But that doesn't make a lot of sense with their second pickup, mm. which is the ES. And they pretty much always run Exor Invoker. I can't remember the last time I saw them run Wex. Well, if, you, if, you, if you're still even going to run an Exor Invoker, you want to have something for him to combo with. Now, you know you're not going to kill off the DK in the mid. Unless Urshik is going to get a block on, at which point having Cold Snap is going to be a more useful thing up against the Dragon Knight. The Clockwork cocking somebody, yeah, Ten that might be one way remaining. to do it, but he, he then still has to get close enough to find the to find the, the cog yeah. block. Remaining. And that's not going to happen with just an Urshaker, unless the Urshaker is able to work his way into a position, Reserve which then time. you're probably not going to have up against a Chen who's moving quite consistently around inside the jungle. So if the Urshaker comes down, it should be flagged pretty early. So I looked to then a combo hero. You're talking about SD and Kunkka. It might not be a bad option if you're running pick. them in the mid lane, sure. But then what's the Earthshaker, a puller on the top? You're, you're basically abandoning your top lane. You're giving Vega free Phantom levels on that Lancer. offline. So let's let them keep the Invoker mid, pick Radiant up a PL, one of their signature pick. heroes again. Uh, Clockwork Skylark, we saw him play that the other day, and he was against an atrocious safe lane trial. He was against like AA Witch Doctor plus one. And you'd expect the clockwork, you know, just com be completely crushed. Somehow, he died once in like 15, 20 minutes, and he got a whole bunch of kills. He was like 6-1-1, one, and one. so I think his play you got to watch out for. But if you're comboing up Bane here with something, you know, Vega Squadron could look for a Marana even. But I think Ten if you remaining. tank yourself up, have DK, who's really beefy on the front lines, Chen with a mech and his hand remaining. of God heal, you can just look to push into towers, because LC right now... What are we looking at? Reserve Invoker, time. he needs a whole bunch of time to get up and running. He needs level 9. He needs, you know, one point in, in Invoke and mm -hmm. four points in the Quas and Exhort to get those double Force Spirits. Bristleback. You need Clockwork, who needs level 6. And yeah, Dyer tank yourself up, back. Bristleback. This is actually really smart, too. Uh, you're talking before about, like, running some kind of Bane Marana. You could even do, do this as a dual lane off lane. Leave DK in the mid, Bristleback in the bottom. Bristleback... He'll be very happy up against a clockwork, and then the chain remaining. can support either the mid or the jungle. You're going up against a PL and an Shaker on top, you're remaining. fine if you're a Bane and a Marana if you're doing that. But even if you don't do that, uh, the Bane will completely control time. the clockwork on the offlane. The clockwork can't really get the upper hand on Bane, Bane basically because any damage he does, brain can just, uh, Bane can just brain sap back out again. And you can have the extra rotation from the Chem, so when Clockwork feels like Bane's just being his normal aggressive <sighs> self, he then switches to Nightmare and out of position, and that's Radiant your first blood right there. Band. It's also a really good block pick. Like, regardless of how well it works with Vega Squadron, imagine how amazing it would work with London Conspiracy. It's a support that they're looking for, set up for Sunstrike, set up for Fisher, yep. and Feeble against DK. Um, amazing utility there, and then also Fiend's Grip against tanky Ten strength heroes who have remaining. limited mana pool. Fiend's Grip is amazing, so yep. not only do they limit London Conspiracy's aggressive potential, remaining. but they get themselves something, like you said, that could run around the map and actually do stuff. He doesn't have to stack and pull and sit back defensively. I'm loving to Dyer Vega's uh, ability to, belt, to melt down these buildings. Like, the DK Witch is already Doctor. one of them, uh, with that corrosive breath that he's got Radiant when he gets into the dragon pick. form, but the Bristleback high physical damage output 
which is also there. They could just run him as a safe lane core here too. I have no problem with that whatsoever. And then you just have someone who's very tanky to go up against on the Conspiracy on the top. But Vega, with the Bristleback and the DK, you're going to be able to deal with most of the PL illusions. I'm worried the PL will get a little bit too much space and get into the Vlad's Diffusal Blade very early on. Uh, and that'll cause a lot remaining. of problems for the for the Bristleback. Not uh, as much for the DK, just for the Bristleback. I think you're missing that you know, sort of AoE remaining. burst damage. It would be lovely to have a Queen of Pain here for Vega. Mm. I'm just trying to think of what would actually fit that role, Reserve though. Reserve time. For this? Because you've got your... P personally, all I'd want to see is something like... And I'm, not, I'm not talking burst damage. I'm talking something like a Luna. Uh, let, you fall, let you force down the towers and you can mop up the PL illusions pretty quickly. The Glaives will do most of the work for you. That's where my mind went with this, at least. Leshrac, maybe? If you've got Bristleback in the mm -hmm. offlane, Lesh with Bane, set up for the that split works. turrets. You've got Magic AoE for the PL Illusions. Because I, I struggle to see them fitting another melee core here in here. Just yeah. because of, you know, Clockwork, Earthshaker, they get in there and they do a hell of a lot of damage if you do group up around a tower. So I, I want a ranged... It's then the, do you want to go for that magic burst? Remaining. Do you want some more single target? Do you, you know, there's so many avenues you go down that Five aren't entirely remaining. optimal. I think, I think Leshrac could be nice. Well, they're out of time. Oh, wow. Okay. Slada will be the final one. Did they D? Nope. Nope, they didn't DC. That's a legitimate pick. Correct me if I'm wrong, but Doppelganger doesn't remove amplification, correct? It shouldn't? It, it shouldn't in my mind as far as... Yeah, it shouldn't. <laughs> it, no, it's like Face Shift and, you know, Astro Imprisonment. They take you off the map for yeah. however much time, but, but, but they, they don't, don't actually, dispel. They don't dispel. Yeah. Okay. So you can dodge, so, but so you don't when, dispel. So when PL... Because this is always one of these things about PL, and one of the reasons why I kind of felt like PL is one of the most underrated heroes in the current patch, is the fact that PL with Doppelganger is continuously able to evade the enemy. So you disappear for a set amount of seconds, Ten seconds you then remaining. come back in, and then there's three of them you got to choose from. And now every single Five time there's going to be a Moo Cloud over the top of his head revealing his position. So the PO will have a little bit of a harder time escaping. they got ways to kill him off too. And this is when I quote from the Book of Harney, Chapter 1, how to deal with illusion-based heroes. Now this is where the old PL where there was a whole bunch of him, but it still can apply. You don't attack the illusions. You don't You don't try and think, how do I beat an illusion-based hero by killing off all the illusions? Because then you're just feeding its power. What you do is you focus on the main hero itself. And you've got that. You've got high physical damage from the Bristleback that can go direct. You've got Crush, as well as Amplification, directly in towards the PL. And you've got a Bane, who can fiend script. This is a, a huge thing, really, for them. Because he's their mass control factor that could just screw around with all of London Conspiracy. I still think London Conspiracy have better initiation and better follow-up and a great team fight. But if Vega get these BKBs up at a decent rate, then I feel like London Conspiracy, they have to hit some sweet-ass timing or really good positions when they, when they engage in, or else they're in a lot of trouble, because Vega will just outlast them. So an early passive game is going to work well for London Conspiracy, but with Vega the way they play, you just don't see that happening, right? Bane's going to be moving, moving around with Chen. Early smokes from those two won't be surprising at all. Like, we talked about Bane, how he can set up for, you know, the crush for Bristleback, Nasal Goon, things like that. He's also very good with Chen. Very underrated combination there is the Nightmare into Troll Trap or Centaur stuff. So you can get in towards mid lane, Invoker, completely immobile, doesn't really have any kind of escape mechanism unless he does go Quas Wex, and I don't expect it here from Kiza. Let's check your Witch Doctor. It's time to set up your defensive bunkers and hide behind your core heroes because <laughs> your stuns are really going to be needed. Uh, and if I don't get them off, life can be hard. We're missing our last player in from Vega. I don't know where uh, no one has disappeared to, but he did it this last game too. I, I actually don't even think he's there for the draft. Just walks off, goes and pats a cat. No one. And comes back again. That's, that's all that keeps happening to him. But uh, we are starting to build up, build up our viewer numbers now. So uh, thanks for everyone who is tuning in. Get on the Facebooks and the Twitters. Share out the uh, the live stream. You can either find it at joindota.com or you can go to mlg.tv forward slash join Dota and you can watch it from there. Uh, and for all those people who are watching because they're bet rares, good luck to you all. Because um, I know we also have the stream over on dota2lounge.com. Now, you were talking about Bristleback against Clockwork, right? 
and how he wouldn't be too sad about that. Yeah. How do you feel about an aggro lane here from Vega? Bane and Slaughter against the PL and I don't think Witch you Doctor. Need to. But the Chen would control the jungle, so Witch Doctor and ES can't stack and pull. You but can't build up. You, you're just talking about. Oh, you're talking about actually putting the Chen into the. Yes. Uh, it, it could get messy. It can get messy really, really quickly. With Earthshaker and Witch Doctor, I wouldn't want to try and battle up against their control factors early on. Like when Chen's got a little bit of farm behind him, when he's got a couple of extra creeps behind him, then maybe, but even then, you need to have good aggressive wards for positioning. But your early wards can be looking at rune control or at least lane control. Uh, I, I don't see a reason for the risk. I, I can, I'm very happy with the dual lane. If you actually want to get away with it, you could run a Slada as well as a Bane dual off lane. I'm okay with that. But I still think your Chen should be inside the jungle and influencing the bottom lane and the mid lane. There's no reason why Vega have to take the risk. At least that's my thoughts. Yeah, he could still move towards mid. I'm I'm not sure about that bottom lane. Clockwork against Bristle, he gets his mana drained. It depends on his item build and how it, it depends he on the positioning to too. Yeah. Like, like the mana drain's only ever gonna happen if, if the Bristleback moves into a position where the cogs are gonna be a problem. He's always gonna be in that position. Yeah, okay. Oh look, I'm I'm going for a last oh. see, see, I, I I used to think that, then I've seen a lot of actually Bristle versus clock lanes and it was a 50-50 from my memory for who really comes out on top. Because if, uh, the, if the yeah. Bristleback gets inside, exactly. then the clockwork is massively punished and he can never come close enough again to get the cogs off. Especially early on when yep. he doesn't have level 2 in battery assault. Yeah, that's, yep. that's a good point. And, and if, you, if you get in close to as the Bristleback and you just keep cool spraying it up, then Skylar's going to be sitting there going, well, I've already got three stacks on me. If I lock myself inside the cogs, that's going to be at least another two stacks being applied to me. Can I tank up this amount of damage and can I kill him before it's over? Now you said wait until he's level 3 with the level 2 battery assault. I think he needs even more than that to kill off the Bristleback. So the Bristle uh, will just turn away. I don't think the clock has kill potential and at, like at any point during the laning stage unless yep. he has help. It's it's just the laning the like the the ability to keep him out. Yeah. Like that's it. But then but, the but he has he has to be aware that if he ever goes for the cogs on the bristle back, there is the chance the bristle will get in too close on him. But then there's a sun strike. That's the fact you've got that, like that's the help that I'm looking at is, here. Is if that really enough damage though to kill off the bristle? It's all very situational. Like yeah, if, it really if is. Clockwork hits level three and has two in battery assault, catches the bristle in and Mag feels the need to turn and actually fight rather than trying to break out. It's, it's going to come down to like that split second where Mag thinks, okay, do I fight, do I break out? If he breaks out and dodges the Sun Strike or doesn't get hit by that, he should be perfectly fine and that you know, tips the scales, makes the clockwork basically lose the lane if he is a little bit over aggressive. But equally, if he turns to fight and thinks he's got a chance to actually bring the clockwork down, Sun Strike could actually kill him off. Hmm. Heart issues. Yeah. What is with Spartan's name? Is there a meaning behind A equals 1, 16 equals love? Because I, I don't get the reference. I have no and idea. Like most of these things I, I actually know the references of. But... I have, n I, like, I have no idea. A equals 1, was it 16 equals, equals love? Equals love. What, what, what comes up? He, he comes up. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific. Spartan there's, comes up, that's there's, it. There's a movie released in 2012, which was 16 Love, but that's a tennis movie. <laughs> what? There is no such tennis score as 16 Love. Oh, maybe that's the whole... Oh, oh wow, that looks like a really bad movie. Wow. That's a horrendous movie. Oh, we're starting. Oh, we're in. Yes, okay. thank God. If you really want to watch some trashy no, no, movie not, tonight, no, no. <laughs> really, really trashy movie tonight. Like we're talk we're talking worse than um, Toby. That was released in 2012. Like we're not we're not talking about a movie that was no. released, you know, seven or eight years ago. No, that was released recently. It wasn't 2012 when the world was meant to end. This movie was meant to be the start of it. That <laughs> <laughs> was, and then all of a We've sudden, we've not even watched it, and we know it's all, bad. Then all, then all of a sudden, the Incans didn't realize. Oh crap! We we screwed up, everybody. Oh man! Uh, <laughs> that cover. I can't get it out of my head. It's like a Carly Minogue song. Skylark. Oh, Seema. Seema. He's up a long, he's long he's way. P potentially. Okay. He's locked. Tango's. He has to come through the trees. <laughs> He'll be fine. There's all. There's always a way out. There's always a way out. There's. There's no such thing as a no-win scenario. Captain James T. How many sentries do London Conspiracy have? There's one over on Skylark and one on the Witch Doctor, but they're not. They're not going for it. That's kind of a. 
a weird water place for this. Yeah, quite often you see one further over to the west on this couple of ramp on these couple of ramps here. Just yep. to, just to watch the chen, you know, moving yep. back and forth to mid to side. Yeah. This one here watches, you know, chen actually farming. It's it's also in a position where you would try and deep ward anyway. Because you, you throw like a sentry ward up, up in this region, this will be able to scout out the magic bush, it'll scout out the any of the wards begins. which might be in the camps. Yeah, it's, it's such a very easy to de ward ward, and with the path that you moved, it was very obvious you would be planting one there. Yeah. So, but if you went if you went further in, and even if you were just dumbing this, you went further in to try and fake like you put a ward down the side. This will block up the critical connector camp for the Chen. Uh, and also scout out the movement that was coming out from Solo. Ooh, but now they, don't, now they don't achieve either. Kizer is going cross west. It's it's kind of it's kind of the build, but this it's is necessary. this is this is what I was talking about. Like you're not going to get a kill on a DK if you're going Exort. You need to have Cold Snap available. The problem is, like, this timing from the Earth Shaker. <laughs> he was trying to time Denied. it so he could he could lock the. Uh, <laughs> he can lock the DK in the river, but there's no damage from the Evoker. There's, there's absolutely nothing. Mag's actually dead. Um, Mal this is Malediction level 1. And with PL, they get the kill on the Bristleback. Blood of Conspiracy actually spill first blood on the top lane. What, what Wish Doctor goes level 1 Malediction? A lot of Wish Doctors, when they're against tanks... Middle lane, they're going to get a second one. No one's up too far. No damage. But actually, no, the Cold Snap wears off and there's still no damage, yeah. But yeah, against heroes like Darkseer, Beastmaster, Bristleback, a lot of the time, well, I'd, I'd say like 70% of the time, you see Wish Doctors go for level 1 Maledict, because they can 1v1 against him. With a cask, you know, you launch one stun, it's like, yeah, with the Voodoo Restoration, maybe you last a bit longer. But with Maledict level 1, you do a ton of damage, especially if they turn to try and, you know, man fight you, which a lot of offlaners will try and do. Mm -hmm. I'm getting a better trade here, but apparently not. <laughs> he just wanted to burn the mana of the Bane. Uh, Skylark should be really careful. The Nightmare's gonna come, there's still mana for a Brain Sap, and Slyle's gonna do the crush. So this is the death of the Clockwork, and this is what we knew could happen. This is the kill potential of Seema as well as Parsha together, that we thought was going to be, hey, you could just do this on, as a dual offlaner as well, as opposed to putting Mag on that top lane. Well, Mag is managing to do a cheeky little stack here with his cool sprays, not having to go into the Ancient Pit, just doing it from sort of secret shop area, and then also controlling top rune. Spartan, Earthshaker, where's he heading? He's, he's waiting. Like, if there's a possibility that he could find himself a kill, he'll go for it. Uh, this Observer Wall is still doing a lot of work, and this is the kill he does want. He wants to find the Witch Doctor as he rotates back up into the lane. Because he knows he can just start spraying and stacking over on this guy. But he needed the Witch Doctor to move over to the side to do some level of pull. Unfortunately, at the time he's going to pick up a rune, the Witch Doctor wouldn't be looking to do that. Unless it was a movement for the 15 second pull. Well, Mag's got himself a mango as well. It's Not probably today. one of the heroes that's best on the mango, like Undying and Bristlebank, just to have that extra burst of mana so you can spam out core sprays and you know, soul ropes or whatever you want to decays. Mm -hmm. Kiza has phase boots already. The amount of farm they've secured him this early on, especially against a melee hero with a great attack animation, with you know a, a lane spamming mechanism in Breathe Fire. This Invoker's got a great lane. But he really needed this. Like he, he needed the extra damage when he go for this Quas Wax build. Uh, the interesting thing for me would be if he feels like he can get away with the Hand of Minus, or if he feels like he has to be a little bit more aggressive. I don't know if this is one of these games where you try and build into an Orchid, knowing you're going to go up against three BKB heroes. Mag's dead again. Uh, Paralyzing Cascus. It's a level 1 Malediction, but there's one more Lance that's available come out from the PL, and that They're should be diving. enough to tick Mag over the edge. And in fact, a quick Doppelganger away. You're never in any trouble as a PL when you got that up. Then he's got Salve, he's got Voodoo Restoration, so many things to heal him up. He's gonna get Vlad's pretty soon too. Oh, mid -lane. Actually, no, he, he, he bought a bottle. Uh, Cold Snap and Fisher. Uh, no. he's, he's fine. He's fine. He's Earth got more than enough life. Earthshaker wanted to get a little further to the left there to get that Fisher block off, but he couldn't quite move it. I'm but yeah, like, yeah, what's, what's with the bottle on the PL? Can you explain this one to me? this this logic to me? Instead of a Soul Ring. Like, which we see quite a lot. He wants the HP regen against the Bristleback because he's going to get spammed down, down by cool sprays. And then he also wants to counter spam with his lance. So it gives him the HP and mana regen without losing out on anything. Okay, but to have something like that over something like a Vlad's, especially when you're over on the dire side and you also have your offlaner dying, 
Um, and you also have a Witch Doctor who can just level up Voodoo Restoration. He, Is it really worth it to get the bottle? He wants his personal laning phase to extend, you know, a couple more minutes. So he wants the Witch Doctor to be able to go and stack and pull while he can be self-sustaining on the top lane. Um, we, we've seen it from a couple of players where they go for this bottle and it's basically just to allow him to sit on lane one versus one against the off lane without forcing their support to be there. Because you've seen, Earthseeker needs to be mid. He needs to be there to help him. Yeah. It's, it's just the issue I'm having is what's going to happen when Pasha, who is still the main man for Vega, I know the Chen is the one with the highest CS over on Vega, um, which again happened in game number one of our first series tonight, where the Chen came out and all of a sudden Powerhouse did arrive. But it's the combination with the Slaughter where you're able to kill off practically anybody. And when the PL's only got a bottle, like, it's not enough resistance against the power that is Vega. And that's my concern, that he will just become cannon fodder. Chan is basically level 6, right? He is he's yep. basically the same level as this invoker. Yep. From the jungle. He hasn't you know, made any movements towards the middle lane or anything like that. He could have, but with Earthshaker always lurking in the background, there's no real way to go. And there's, there's no need. No, and bot lane, they've, they've not needed him. Yep. They've been able to nightmare him to crush every single time. Maybe he makes a smoke move up to help Mag, because right now he's in trouble. Maledict after Lance. He's level two. This is uh, not enough for him to try and survive the doppelganger down. The hand of God kicks in, but Mag, that malediction. The, no the last pulse, is it going to be enough? Yeah, it's going to kill him Fissure. off and the Fissure to ensure it. While Seema going in very deep on the Witch Doctor. The Voodoo Restoration is actually keeping him alive through all of that. He wasn't going to die the Nightmare, but yes. Seema's not giving up on this. Wish Doctor has a TP scroll, he's going to Voodoo Restoration up, DK but that's mid. a level 3 brain sap, so all he's going to do is just sap- Oh no! 24 HP! You're right with the DK in mid, this Fissure Block is going to come in, he'll stick around for the EMP burn, and that Corrosive Skin, it can send him critical, or can it? Wow. Down to 60, but yeah, he's got too much life, switches over the Tornado, which actually drops him a little bit low, but it's still enough to survive. Is there a Lance, Mana, something, anything? No. So, no kills anywhere, even though everything was pretty close. Seema comes in. He's got brain sap available. They got dragon if, if Dragon Knight can, yeah, with the Dragon Tail stun, the brain sap, they can kill him. Nice play. Ah. does find a regen rune. He's picked himself a, a box. No, that's Maraz. That's the PLs. So the Invoker's going for an urn first, which does actually tick over that cold snap, uh, cold snap now. So it's a pretty good item just to pan out your stats. The, the original Quaswex Invoker build, which was always phase boots into just a casual Sage's Mask, then drums, core staff, things like that. We've seen a transition away into, you know, you mentioned the Orchid earlier on. And I've just been thinking, what does he go for here? Because Orchid, who's it good against on this team? Maybe you can slant up the Bane or the Bristleback and keep them locked down, but damage-wise, I don't think You're talking about the Invoker The Invoker, here? yeah. He needs mobility more than damage, I think, so by four staff. By the time you finish the Orchid, yeah, it would be too late. The Bristle, the DK, and the Slaughter, all BKB heroes, they're all not going to give a crap. Um, or they just tank through it all, as you said. So, yeah, going for a more late game disable and more early game fighting is going to be a better option for him. So, the four stars, I think you've hit the mark perfectly there. You get yourself a four star and you just go to town. Skylark? Yeah, he's going to get triple stunned right now and amplified. This is his third death of the game already. And the tier one's going to be lost on bottom. So they're actually rotating in. Now, the tornado's still on cooldown for five more seconds. So, he can't pick him up. And they're moving over, so now they're getting the reveal. The uh, amplification over on this invoker is the most critical thing. Uh, key Stop vision it. of what he's up to. Dire Courier goes Dyer's down over tower mid. Has D so DK gets a tower, uh, basically Dyer's chips away the tower, tower, then gets the courier. Okay. It was sitting back past the tier 1 tower. It must have flown, like, in this area here, and DK's long range attack because he was in dragon form. Uh, must have just about got it. Yeah. Was, was he moving that way, or was he coming in behind the tower? Because that would make a little bit more sense in invoker. Wow, okay. Well, you can't run away from this one, but he doesn't need to. They just EMP burn, paralyzing cast, slowing down no one, the Valediction as well. I think he realizes now he is dead. So he's looking for the pick off. In fact, Slada just jumps in, but the hand of God, he ain't dead. He's living and fighting. They're going to lose the Earthshaker too, and the Witch Doctor, the Troll Trap, the rotations from Vega, 100% on point, moving after taking up the T1 Tower straight to the mid. 12 Stick Totter than DK, Hand of God, Blink on the Slada, from Tier 1 to Tier 1 to Tier 1. Phantom Lancer is still farming up on top lane with 1200 gold. But it's he, getting he can't do anything, and this, this TP is a really bad idea. Spartan is going to get completely destroyed. They got stuns and control. And now now another one's coming in. This cancel. one rightly is being cancelled. That one was coming in from the Invoker, I believe. 
Mag's been chased down the top lane, but PL's got three quill stacks on top of him, and they're and they're running out of space. Doppelganger up, and Blink. Well, it's on cooldown for the moment, but his sprint's coming off cooldown in one second time, which means the chase is on. You might throw. Okay, without the crutch, he's not killing off the uh, the PL. Thought he had him. He thought he had him. <laughs> it was a lance flying at him. <laughs> like, and he crushed the illusion which appeared next to him. He thought wrong. <laughs> I really am in a negative mood today, Durka. I don't know why. <laughs> Just look at the Chen. I, I, I'm so happy, happily negative today. <laughs> and it's not a good feeling. Feel happy about Solo. Basically level 8. <laughs> He's got his mech completed 10 minutes into the game. It's already on the, it's already on the courier. <laughs> oh my, 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 my. No, I, 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 f I felt like, like Vega was going to play well in this game. I felt like their lane dominance was their critical thing in game number one, which would be transferred over to game number two. And then we saw the initial laning phase. It's like, oh, maybe I'm, uh, I'm very wrong about this. But their rotations and their activity between the five to ten minute mark of this game has just been superb. They're playing the Chen perfectly. They hit the... And this is the timing I was talking about during the draft. Vega... Seem to just keep finding this perfect timing. The blink dagger at the right time. The Chen had all the space in the world because on the conspiracy did nothing to control him apart from one ward. And I'm not going to count that as something. Dyer's it's it's just really well played by Dyer's Vega. And they know what they can fortified. force. They leave the DK in the front lines. LC don't have an initiation. To go how, on. how does Clockwork Hookshot in here? Look at all the skeletons and Chen Kree. You can't. You actually you can't. cannot Hookshot. It, it, it is the... the the Republic of Vega's army, and then he also gets caught. First stun, second stun, amplification, Chen, Hook, the Fissure tried to buy him some space, not gonna work. At least the Tornado was able to farm up the skeletons, but that's all. Barton? They're losing the Earthshaker. He'll go critical from this, even with the stick charges. One more attack from no one will ensure the kill, and everyone else from LC's backed up. They took the tower and they can keep going. They can raise a new army. Yep, there it is. They just need the creep wave to arrive, and they can take the tier 2 as well. A quick game is a good game, Durka. Mag is still level 5, but he doesn't give a damn. He's got a bottle and a mango. He just lets every- he lets the Chen Kree tank up. He is there for quill sprays and that. Yeah. He's- he's intimidation factor. How many times have we seen with these- with these- with this 3 core meta, uh, just one hero who you think is really important to kill off, because normally he really is. And you go on him, and then you realize how much does it take for me to bring down this one hero, and then realize just how little he's actually bringing to the fight beyond distraction levels. That's exactly what I'm seeing right now from this bristle. And uh, goodbye to the invoker. Man. He's about to get blink crushed, amplified, and then follow up. He's got tornado, but he throws it onto no one. Yeah, that's I just a little <laughs> bit late. I don't know if he's lagging up or something here, but either way, the the position is a little bit off. Bane kills the kills with the brain sap. And now they can move to the tier 2 tower because they focus down. There's no defense. Or they can actually... Okay, yeah. Rush out time. Amplify yeah. damage. Do they actually have medallion too? No. Nope. What is this... What is this clockwork doing? He is hiding in the trees. That is... Radiance a, bottom tower. Yes, an accurate observation. Thank you. I, I would ask the... I pride myself I, I, on my accurate observation. I, I would then ask the extender question. <laughs> why? Um, <laughs> why? It's a very good question. And even oh wait, he's gonna he's gonna go a bamboo, isn't he? It's gonna be a sexy bamboo. No, okay, no, he's not. Sexy bamboo still would have hooked in after the Aegis was taken. Um, but I would ask the extended question now: Why does this PL continue to buy items which allow him to die? He wants to dodge. Y you can't dodge this though. You can try. <laughs> you you can try, but you can't. DK has a shadow blade. Yeah, that's why you can't. Like, you got DK as well as Slaughter. Spartan. Both with initiating items. And in fact, it's not even required right now against the Earthshaker. He didn't even get one totem, stomp, anything off. And that wasn't even a Shadow Blade initiation. He bought boots. His, bo his boots are in the courier. Ha ha! Ha ha, Sometimes, man, you make me smile. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm looking on the bright side here, Toby. Always look on the bright side of life. The rocket saw the DK in the middle. He's also got an Aegis of the Immortal, so what does he care? But th this is this is where I, I start to worry with the PL. You want to try and dodge, but you can't dodge when you have pushes like this. Like, the bottom lane army, the fact that also Solo is manipulating the skeleton army so well, the Tornado EMP is well off target, and in fact, Invoker, he's amplifying and getting stunned up by a Centaur. 
Like, the Centaurs are out of mana for now. The Hand of God will bring him up. But the Arcane Boots will bring him up as well very, very soon. So they'll have enough mana for another Stomp. You're running two sets on the Bane as well as the Chen. You cannot stop this push with what you got. And the PL, you can only dodge for so long. This lineup, pre like before 20 minutes, will come high ground. They have a double damage rune and a level 2 dragon form over on DK. They're coming high ground pre-15 minutes now. Even even if Vladimir's offering for the Chen. The only downside is it's on the current, it's actually in his stash. I'm just looking at this clockwork. Where's he going? What's he doing? Is he prepping for a hook shot? Uh, he's gonna hook in from behind. His goal right now is to make a cogs here, which pushes one hero up and they can use the damage from the tower to win. That was a good fisher to start, but they're still not going. Invoker was you know, used. He's, he's got nothing. Well, Invoker was always this hero. Okay, we'll go cross wax, tornado EMP. You think back to, you know, when Cinderin was playing. When he was picking up Invoker, it was always to stop pushes. And it was a great hero to do it, Tornado yeah. EMP. But when the pushes now are coming pre-20 minutes, like you just mentioned, he doesn't have the levels, he doesn't have the itemization to actually do anything. Else. You're just taking the tier 3 tower 15 minutes in. DK backs up, he's still got the Aegis the Immortal, and that's another reason why Vega is forcing this. And look how deep he's going. He's gonna find... <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. oh my, oh my, oh my! The Paralyzing Castle bounce into the Creep Wave now. Um, and hook shot goes all the way down to Brusselback, pushing back the Dragon Knight. He's gonna lose his ultimate, but at the same time, Skylark. Mag, now the Cool Spray is starting to go to work, and they got three locked. Perfect position from Pasha. The Fiend's Gripper stopping the Invoke from casting Anthony, and he had a tornado that would actually buy him the space. Speaking of that, there she flies, but he's lost his life. It's 15 for three. The Aegis has been blown, but that's all that Vega had to sacrifice to now take out the full bottom racks. With 21 armor and 1400 HP, the Phantom Lancer was. You're wailing away at this Dragonite with five illusions, with lances, just battering away. He couldn't kill him. It took him a good six or seven seconds to take no one down from 110 HP to zero. That's ridiculous. You have almost no damage output from the Conspiracy. You've got good dis... Uh, GG. It, it's over. Yep. Like, five, five minutes ago, you're sort of thinking, okay, let's, let's think about next game. They're pushing in hard. There's limited options for us right now. What do we do next game to stop this? You ban Chen in the first one too. Does that leave Wisp out there for Vega? And really? I, I, again, there, there's so, so much. of This just comes down to lane lane timings. Like you have to read Vega, and Vega haven't really mixed things up a lot. Like they've got a combination of strength, initiation, and push power, and they always have this very obvious timing. You know when it's going to arrive. That was the most hilarious thing about it all. You look at the draft and you go. Okay, you got a Chen, you got a DK, so I know my timing. When he hits level 6, when the Chen's able to find a good amount of farm, then they're just going to come. And in the meantime, Slider and Bane can cause some problems in the lane, and Bristol Pack doesn't matter if he dies, he'll he'll be the presence we need him to be later on. And you then pick up something like an Invoker, which you run across Wex, which delays your defensive timing. EMP Tornado, as we saw, was very ineffective when Vega ran double Arcanes. Uh, and then you have a PL, who not only bought a bottle, but bought BTs as well. So he tried to dodge a fight which was obviously going to come towards him. This, in my mind, then pushes back all of your timings. That build would be fine if you're going up some up against a lineup which could not force high ground. But Vega did everything right. They took all the outer towers, they took Roshan, they then managed to find a DD rune as well on a Dragonite the second he hit level 11. And that was the, that was the icing on the cake to let them push in so early. I think another massive factor is kind of night and day when looking at this game in particular. Vega Squadron, they utilize the jungle you know, to 100% of efficiency. That Chen just had nuts amount of farm. Oops. Whereas London Conspiracy, who did they have farming the jungle? There was no one. Yeah. Phantom Lancer, you think, okay, 15 minutes in, he gets Vlans or something like that, and he goes into the jungle and he starts farming through. But the Invoker can't do it. Yeah. Usually, Vega has something like a Shadow Fiend, a Wisp Tiny, a Chen. They always have one or two heroes that really make the most out of that jungle. You win the economic advantage instead. Yep. And what'd you get in return? Like so the one way they could have done it is if the Earthshaker was able to kill off the mid, but you're ganking a Dragon that's Knight. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's, that's, that's the thing. Do you pick something instead of the PL or Invoker to actually go and flash farm the jungle to bring yourselves back in? Or do you go the other way and play aggressively into Vega's jungle knowing you, how much you they... You could have just picked up a Morbid Mask on the PL and set him into the jungle and allow him to farm. But then, then who do you put leave, top lane? Then leave one of your cores that actually can make the most out of that farm. Someone, I'm not going to say a Witch Doctor or, or the Earthshaker, but some, some other support hero in that. But yeah, uh, we'll, we'll take a break, we'll come back and we can discuss all of this as we will kick into game number two. Uh, so stay tuned and we'll be back.